If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. That first appeared in 1981, and when I first heard it, I thought, oh, they have a new standard voice. That's interesting. I had no idea that that recording, along with the others that came with it, was going to be the longest running and most widely distributed set of telephone recordings in all of history. I still don't know her name. I just call her Cornbreath. But before Cornbreath, it was the wild, wild west out there, as far as recordings you got when you left your phone off the hook were concerned. And here's just a brief collection of a few amusing ones that I've come across in the tape library. There aren't that many of these, but there are a few. First of all, let's start with a basic one from New York Tell. I just have to include this because it's such a classic. This is a recording. Please hang up. There appears to be a receiver off the hook. Please check your main telephone and extension. Then try your call again. Thank you. You know what? That doesn't capture the feeling of it at all, because that came from a number one ESS which had an excellent copy of the master tape on its announcement machine. No, to really get the feeling of that classic New York telephone announcement, we have to get it from a panel or a crossbar office, where it blasts, has flutter, and pretty much scares the crap out of you. When I first heard this, it was 1969, and until this particular day, every time I had left my phone off the hook, all it did was... This tone would stay on indefinitely. But there was one day when I was testing a new method of recording off the phone using a magnetic pickup coil. And on this particular day... This is a recording. Please hang up. There appears to be a receiver off the hook. Please check your main telephone and extension. Then try your call again. Thank you. There you go, that's enough to scare you when that suddenly comes blasting out of the phone. And I didn't even understand what the words were saying when it said, There appears to be a receiver off the hook. It was actually a lot more distorted than that, and I thought it was saying something like, There are penalties for leaving a receiver off the hook. But anyway, that soon passed because by 1973, my Lindbrook Central Office had this much more friendly recording when you left the phone off the hook. It appears you have the receiver off the hook. Please check the extensions and replace any receivers. Thank you. Of course, a recording like this does not have to be loud and raucous to startle you a little bit. I remember in 1982 I was standing at a payphone in Hastings, Florida. It was on a DMS-10, I believe had just regular old dial tone and then a ring tone, and then uh, all of a sudden, as I'm standing there at the payphone... This is a North Florida telephone company. Would you please hang up your telephone? Oh, uh, well, uh... Thank you. This is the North Florida telephone company. Would you please hang up your telephone? Thank you. Hmm, that had a funny overtone in it. I wonder if all the DMS-10s have that. I have no idea. Who cares? Anyway, here's one that you would not mistake for a real person coming on the line. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try it again. If you need help, hang up and then dial the operator. This is a recording. That was from a number three ESS in Jekyll Island, Georgia. All the recordings there were Jane and blastingly loud. Now, here's a folksier version from Thomaston, Georgia. This is a recording. Your phone is off the hook. Please hang it up. Please hang your phone up now. 404-647. Jekyll Island was Southern Bell, and that was recorded in 1979. Thomaston was an independent, recorded in 1983. Now, there used to be a rule in the telephone industry. I don't know whether it was an unwritten rule or whether it actually was written down somewhere. But the rule was this. Never ever give the customer a ringtone when they haven't dialed a number. In other words, never do this. <phone rings> Ringing already? I didn't dial anything. What is this, the hotline to hell? If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. This is a recording.
Hmm, there's that funny modulation again. I think DMS 10s may do this. But anyway, this demonstration of how not to run a phone switch is brought to you by the DMS 10 in Cleveland, Georgia, recorded in 1983 during my last official phone trip. Uh, until not Quebec, of course. A corollary to the aforementioned rule is do not give the customer a ringtone when all you're doing is giving him a recording to tell him that he did not dial a complete phone number. Yes, that's the rule. Don't do this. How can it be ringing if he hasn't even had a chance to dial the whole number? We're sorry. Your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try your call again? This is a recording. 404-865. You know, I think I have figured it out. Yes, the ring is there for a reason. You see, the recording can't start immediately. And so it's important that the customer stay on the line to hear the announcement. Otherwise, he would simply figure that his call didn't go through, and he would just hang up and redial. But by putting on the ring, they make sure the customer does hear... Your call did not go through. Will you please hang up and try your call again? Right. Uh, oh, never mind. Anyway, from going over the old tapes, it does appear that the idea of giving a ring to customers who haven't even dialed a number originated in Canada with the Canadian SP-1 software-controlled crossbar switch. Here's a recording of an SP-1 in Lafayette, Georgia, in the 1980s, doing just that. Please hang up and try your call again. If you need assistance, dial 411. Please hang up now. This is a recording. hang up and try your call again. If you need assistance, dial 411. Please hang up now. This is a recording. Prior to the SP-1 and then the DMS, what would happen is that if you left your phone off the hook, your dial tone would cease and would be replaced by high tone. Yes, high tone. It used to be an industry standard tone. 500 hertz in most places, 540 hertz in some, and then once they went to precise tones, it was 480 hertz. Not to be confused with 440, the call waiting tone. Now when a phone is left off the hook and stays off the hook, or the phone line is shorted out, that's called a permanent signal, as in it is permanently signaling that it wants service. Now, using these recordings from Virginia, here is a typical example of how permanent signals were handled in panel and crossbar offices. This is a crossbar 5 example, and it starts when the shorted line, or the receiver off hook, gets a dial tone and doesn't dial anything. The dial tone is replaced by high tone. up and try your call again. If you need assistance, dial your operator. Please hang up now. This is a recording. The recording leads to the receiver off hook tone, which leads back to the high tone. And there it stays until the line is unshorted. I believe I've read that at this point it comes up on the test board in some way. Now what's interesting is that the number one ESS eliminated the high tone from the permanent signal handling process. It simply was silent until the recording got around. Here's a number one ESS example from Montreal, 1974. This is a partial dial condition, which goes to the receiver off hook recording. They just had one recording for both. And it's a cute recording. You'll notice, though, no ring. Vous n'avez pas complété la composition du numéro désiré dans les délais requis. 
Veuillez, s'il vous plaît, raccrocher et composer à nouveau. Ceci est un message enregistré. You have failed to dial your number in the required time. Please hang up and redial. This is a recording. Vous n'avez pas complété la composition du numéro désiré dans le délai requis. Veuillez, s'il vous plaît, raccrocher et composer à nouveau. Ceci est un message enregistré. You have failed to dial your number in the required time. Please hang up and redial. This is a recording. Had I not hung up, I would have next been connected to the receiver off hook tone for a few minutes and then put on the line farad with the line flagged as being in trouble. That would have been dead silent. That was the Montreal 285 office downtown. Next is the 871 office, which also had a cute recording. My apologies for the dropouts in this part of the recording. The dial tone went on for 17 and a half seconds, in case you're interested. Vous n'avez pas complété la composition du numéro désiré dans les délais requis. Veuillez, s'il vous plaît, raccrocher et composer à nouveau. Ceci est un message enregistré. You have failed to dial your number in the required time. Please hang up and redial. This is a recording. Is that the same girl? Vous n'avez pas complété la composition du numéro désiré dans le délai requis. With more coffee this time? Vous n'avez pas complété la composition du numéro désiré dans le délai requis. I'm not sure. Anyway, while the one ESS had no high tone, the Stromberg ESC did and actually followed the Crossbar 5 model, albeit with precise tones. Notice the dial tone came on just as I picked up the phone, super fast. This is the ESC in Warwick, New York, recorded in February 1977. I've dialed a digit, but I'm not going to dial any more. And uh, partial dial goes to the same place as just letting the dial tone time out. It's giving me more time than a 1 ESS or even a number 5 crossbar would. Looks like it's given me an entire 30 seconds to complete dialing the number. Call again. Your telephone has been left off hook. Please check any extension phones or hang up and call again. I think that's the voice of the famous Warwick operator. Let's see. Warwick, your telephone has been left off hook. Hello? Please check any extension phones or hang up and call again. Warwick? Hmm, sounds like her. In any event, the inward operator from Warwick is famous for saying Warwick because we had to call inward and be silent in order to get her to hang up to then have the trunk reset and use the TSD to get back to the ESC to make a goody tandem call. But that's a whole other story. This next example from the ESC in Quarryville, Pennsylvania is very well recorded and so I'm going to let the dial tone play all the way through. Turns out the ESCs give me 33.4 seconds of dial tone and that's consistent over these three examples.
This is a recording, Quietville, Pennsylvania. The telephone receiver has been off the hook for an extended period, which has caused the equipment to time out. Please replace your receiver and start your call again. Thank you. This is a recording, Quietville, Pennsylvania. The telephone receiver has been off the hook for an extended period, which has... I hung up on the receiver off hook tone and got that famous ESC lockout noise and then had to do a short flash before I got a new dial tone again. Here's another one, Morgantown, Pennsylvania. I'll go right to the place where the high tone starts. This is a recording in Morgantown Telephone Office. Your line is being held into our equipment. Please check all phones and extensions to make sure they are on hook. Then redial. Thank you. This is a recording in The last two examples were from Dave and my long phone trip in August 1976. Now here are my favorite permanent signal recordings from the great state of Texas recorded in 1974 and 1976. I first heard about these on a call from Dallas when Ben was passing through in the summer of 1974. This recording is just, it, um, I don't know what to say, it's just that when I, this is the funniest thing I've ever got. It's, I don't know, maybe you've heard something like it before, but at least this particular one stands out even among the ones you might have heard. It's pretty, it makes sense to do it, but uh, nevertheless, the way, especially the way this is done is just, this, this wording and the sounds, and I don't know what to say. Oh, here it is. Watch it, you were. Oh, uh, oh no, that's... The tape he's about to play features the sound of a switchman whistling, and every time the tone passes 2600, it starts to disconnect him from the call to me. Oh, no, I hope that's someone's... like it's like a com for some commercial they have a, a thing that's supposed to be a computer that and flashes lights yeah right yeah right that's what I, mean, I don't believe was that general telephone excuse me was that general telephone Southwestern Bell. i also got one that went um, you know it's a drum recorder so you know this is the telephone company. You even get that on reorder because you're still on the first selector. So it times out to that. You can continue. Oh, what is it? Is it step by step with a special timing step step. out? With a the, direct control step by step that times out? Right. Here's the original Odessa recording. You'll notice Ben gets a dial tone and dials something, which goes to a reorder, and then he is surprised by the recording coming on. Of course, what triggers the recording to come on is a timer, uh, I mean, uh, automatic testing equipment, which detects that someone's phone has been on the first selector without going anywhere for a certain number of seconds.
Automatic testing equipment has found trouble with your line. Would you please check to see that all the receivers are in place? Thank you. Automatic testing equipment has found trouble with your line. The next stop on Ben's trip in 74 was Big Spring. From the dial tone it appears Big Spring was just a small 355 step. And it had one too. The next stop was Abilene, which had a more formal one. Apparently, this was the official Southwestern Bell recording. 915-672-0394 in Abilene. that a receiver is off the hook on your line. Please check to see that all your receivers are properly in place. Abilene was a number one step office that had a crossbar five type tone plant. There were a good number of those. Now all of these Texas recordings are from step offices and on step it has to work differently because while panel and crossbar are able to take you off the dial tone to put you on a separate trunk to give you the recording, step can't do that. All it can do is, after a certain amount of time, superimpose the recording on top of the dial tone, or perhaps the reorder, if you're sitting on the first selector having not gone anywhere. On these steps, you can even dial something and have the call go through once that recording has been superimposed. It just goes off. And here's a tape of Ben doing that in Amarillo in 1976. Here he first gets the permanent signal recording and then dials a 1, which goes to centralized intercept, ending up on another famous Southwestern Bell recording. One noteworthy thing here is that once the recording comes on, it bridges him to other phone lines that are off the hook and getting the same recording, one of which has a coin phone with a stuck totalizer, which is going and you can hear that in the background. So this recording was actually a potential conference. Can you imagine what a phone company nightmare that would be? Everyone in a step office deliberately leaving their phone off the hook in order to talk to each other through the recording that was there to get people to hang up in the first place? That could actually happen. And there have been permanent signal conferences before. Anyway, Here's Amarillo. Good opportunity to test out the sponge and a pickup coil, relatively speaking, and um, to record the 374 exchange in the 806 area in Amarillo bus station. Okay, we'll do. Well, um, do first the pickup coil as I am now speaking on. <laughs> This 
This is a telephone company announcement. We have an indication that a receiver is on the hook on your line. Please check to see that all your receivers are properly in place. Sorry, the number you have reached is not in service at this time. If you need assistance, please stay on the line and the operator will answer. This is a recording. The panel offices in Manhattan did not use regular high tone for the most part on their permanent signal. Instead, many of them used a special signal which consisted of high tone clicking off and on at 60 impulses per minute along with the talk battery on your line. This was specifically done because there were so many small manual switchboards in both companies and in apartment buildings. And what that flashing high tone would do is signal the operator to pull down the cord once a call had ended and the outside line had gone back to dial tone and timed out to permanent signal. Now my West 73rd Street panel, which I have extensive recordings of, did have this feature, but I haven't been able to find the actual recording of it yet. I will put it here when I do. In the meantime, here is a 1971 recording made from my Long Island crossbar 5 when a friend called me from Manhattan from one of those very switchboards and bridged two lines together letting me hear the permanent signal handling process. You'll hear a few beeps of the flashing high tone followed by a wonderfully fluttery rendition of the New York Telephone classic permanent signal recording. Also, get a load of this trunk noise. I'll talk about that later on. is a recording. Please hang up. There appears to be a receiver off the hook. Please check your main telephone and extension. Then try your call again. Thank you. This call is actually rooting through the world's first crossbar tandem, known as Interzone, in the famous 204 Second Avenue building, the building that was largely destroyed by fire in February 1975. Interzone Tandem was actually one of the casualties of that fire. It was never rebuilt. Interzone Tandem was installed in 1941, and this trunk is a 20-mile-long wire trunk from 204 Second Avenue to Lindbrook, Long Island. In 1941, wire trunks this long were still being installed. By the early 60s, this was done with N-carrier, and by the end of the 60s, it was being done only with T-carrier. But anyway, this was an ancient trunk running through many, many central offices with a lot of repeaters and so many opportunities for power supply signatures to leak into it that that ended up resulting in this rather amazing collection of sounds that was the background sound of all the calls from panel offices in New York City to my home in Long Island up until February 1975. Here are two other recordings that my friend patched in from his switchboard. One is the 10th Avenue Long Distance Tandem, and the other is the centralized vacant code recording for Manhattan, which always sounded terrible, and coincidentally was also located at 204 Second Avenue. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. 21243. I'm sorry, we are unable to complete your call as dialed. 
Please take the number and dial again, or ask the operator for assistance. This is a recording. Two, one, two, four, three. I'm sorry. We are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again, or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. And those are the only recordings of Calls Through Interzone that I actually have in the entire collection, which is really too bad because it was an essential part of New York City's network as called from panel offices, and I'll explain that somewhere else because it gets complicated. But suffice it to say that the panel offices needed some special help when it came to charging for multi-message unit calls, and Interzone, along with City Tandem, also destroyed in the Second Avenue fire, was there to do just that. Anyway, that's it for this particular segment. I hope you've had a good time leaving your phone off the hook over and over again. And now that we're finished with this... Please hang it up. Please hang up. Hang up and we die. Please hang up now. Please hang up. Please, please hang, hang up. up. Would you please hang up your telephone? Hang up. Hang up. Hang up. Hang up. Please replace your receiver. Why replace it? It works great. Good night. The recording of the Cleveland, Georgia DMS has been edited to obscure a phone company error. In fact, at the time I was there, the partial dial and the vacant code recordings were each in each other's place. The Virginia Permanent Signal example is a composite of a recording from Fredericksburg and a recording from Culpeper.